Having a hitscan play on your team can be a blessing or a curse. They are either a cold calculated killer that silently carries your team to victory, or an impertinent crybaby loser that holds your game hostage until you grant them a mercy pocket. While this duality isn't anything special in the realm of Overwatch players, what is unique is that hitscan players are probably the most proud kinds of players in our community. These lads are gonna take 1v1s whenever they can, and no matter how often they lose a duel, they always have an excuse for why that happened. So why would you want to play hitscan? I mean, even Blizzard themselves gave up on classifying this game as an FPS in light of all the DLC characters that have put that label into question in the last five years. I actually had to change the script because I didn't realize they stopped calling it an FPS. Point being, in a universe where characters can punch, dash, fly, and explodify their way to victory, having to actually aim at your targets has become an antiquated way of fighting. That doesn't stop many hitscan players from engaging in what is arguably the most elaborate schlong measuring contest in the history of mankind, but to their credit, I think you have to be at least a little messed up in the head to be playing this game for years on end. So what happens if the pocket me and I'll carry type of Widowmaker faces off against the don't worry guys I got this kind of Widow, who will reign supreme in this battle of aim and take home the victory. Man I really hope that neither of them are cheating like that Widowmaker on our last episode. As if being a platinum player wasn't hard enough, Duffley and his friends were tasked with combating not just a smurf but a bonafide cheater. While our heroes invested blood, sweat and tears into making Tony's life as difficult as possible, this Widowmaker refused to go down cranking up the heat with an ever-increasing barrage of headshots. The more heads they exploded, the more apparent became their use of third-party software as they tried to mask their abnormally high-scoped accuracy stat. While I'm not going to spoil whether or not Duffley successfully took home the dub, watching a team of Platinum players come together to make a cheater's life miserable was a sight to behold. But we are done with the cheating variety of hitscan players, for they don't have the pride or the cojones to engage in a genuine hitscan duel. So make sure to insta-lock Widowmaker and keep your excuses at the ready, because our story story today takes place on Nombani. Now if there was ever a map to fight for hitscan supremacy, it is this one. The overabundance of high ground allows many a hitscan hero to feel right at home, meaning that this is going to be a heavily contested space. At this point a shout out to Bunny for submitting this replay and a pat on the back for what is inevitably going to turn into a bit of a babysitting session. If you want to submit your own replays for a chance to be featured in a video, make sure to join my discord, link in the description below. Just to set the tone for what this diamond match is gonna look like, Shinobi decided to kick this offense round off on Reaper just to shadow step in the face of the enemy Widowmaker, which went about as well as you would imagine. I know I often give you guys a hard time when you leave comments like, this looks like a silver match, but there are moments where I have a hard time defending what these players are trying to achieve, let alone how they ended up in Diamond. Not that I'm one to speak. Thankfully, there were at least some players on Bunny's team that actually had their monitors turned on. While most of her comments were trying to regroup, the kill feed started to light up, signaling a faint hope. Doom had snuck his way around the defenders to take control of the high ground and started firing into secluded members of the blue team. With the enemy Widowmaker taken care of and their brigade being the only one to contest the capture, this soldier saw an opportunity. The enemy Brig was desperately trying to hold onto the point, holding down left click as hard as they could, but alas, Doom's aim would prevail. Not for long though, because their monkey came to finish the job. But the damage was already done, our hero's attack was in full effect thanks to the opening created by their soldier. They seized the opportunity to not just flatten the defenders, but take their sweet time with it in order to ensure a staggered spawn. While their offensively minded teammates went on ahead, the red team's supports decided to stay on the objective to lay their claim. Bunny brought back her soldier without whom this fight would have not gone their way, and what do they do with that second chance? Stay the choke point to ego peek the enemy Widowmaker like a true hitscan main. Unnamed though, Reinhardt God continued to push on towards the enemy spawn to make sure they could not interrupt the capture, laying down the smack to begin cementing their legacy. But there is a fine line to walk between madness and brilliance, and in this case, Osidon enjoying the support of their respawning teammates ended up making the difference. Thankfully, their sacrifice was not made in vain. The capture of the first point was secured, allowing our heroes to avoid becoming the next victim of the infamous first point Nombani hold. But the challenge had just begun. The blue team's Widowmaker Faker was determined to make their presence known, and much to the detriment of our heroes, this was not the only issue. The defender's tank line was a force to be reckoned with, they had no intention of leaving the capture point despite having lost the objective, thereby forcing Bunny and friends back into their spawn. Their display of dominance went far enough as to waste a dragon blade for literally no reason just to show the attackers that they didn't need it to win. 
The blue team was not taking our heroes seriously and Doom, who just swapped to Widow, was determined to make them regret that. But because losing one player in completely avoidable fashion was not enough, the blue team's Ana decided to stick their head into the lion's maw just to really make sure that it does not smell like roses. The attackers were storming out of the spawn with a vengeance, a two elimination lead warranted an aggressive approach, but aggression often comes with carelessness, which Faker made use of to re-establish their position at the top of the food chain before going on to save their Reinhardt from getting MTD'd. But our heroes did not know the meaning of the word retreat. They continued their assault and managed to find eliminations even in the wake of Faker's onslaught. And an onslaught is exactly what this was. This Widowmaker did not need a mercy belt attachment to get work done and displayed the hitscan prowess through sheer tenacity and impressive aim, ultimately stopping the red team in their tracks. Being the only survivor, Bunny did what every reasonable support player should and decided to head back into the spawn. Turns out some of them do know what retreating means and well, even if they didn't, Faker kind of forced them into that decision anyway. What followed was a gruesome spawn camp sites with the defenders. The tank duo continued to dominate the front and back lines while the widow was popping heads like I hope you pop that subscribe button. But just like before, a level-headed approach was proving more useful than a sheer display of dominance. While Osidon went for a hero spawn, Unnamed had no desire to engage in a tank battle and instead cut off their support line to great effect. It is impressive how swiftly the blue team managed to turn fights around whenever their opposition got overzealous and any attempt at escaping their counterattack was ultimately futile. The defenders had sacrificed a second point capture for a meme, allowing Bunny and friends to stay in the game. It kinda shows how little the hitscan differential mattered because while Faker continued to outperform not only Doom but the rest of their team, the attackers showed themselves unimpressed and continued to make progress anyway. And the third point painted that same picture. The two hitscan virtuosos were engaging in duels at every step of the way, few of which Doom came out victorious in. While they went on about their petty squabbles, the red team's diva kept the ball rolling through a massive ultimate that killed one and a half tanks, with Bunny picking up the Glock to eliminate another half a tank without a care in the world for her widow's duel. At last, our heroes succeeded in finishing their attack round with almost two minutes left on the clock. They put themselves in a good position to win, however, little did they know that this hitscan feud had only just begun. Despite an incredibly strong carry performance from Faker, their team continued to find ways of throwing away the advantages created by them. On the other side, Doom was barely competent enough to take on the duel, constantly demanding reses just to lose even more 1v1s. The second round started with a clear favorite in the hitscan department and an undecided outcome for the victor of this match. Faker had no intention of slowing down, immediately prying for an opening in our hero's defensive lineup. And who did they find carelessly out in the open? Of course it was Doom. As you can see, Bunny was was being a thoughtful babysitter and had a feeling that somebody's gonna need the pocket more than the rest of their team. When Doom's head colored the catwalk red, a defense matrix covered resurrection immediately brought them back into the game. Faker started to realize that Doom was not the issue more than the teammates around them. Following that res, they decided to take a different approach from the rest of their comrades to find and take out Bunny. Moments later, the rest of the team stomped onto the capture point to wreak even more havoc, eliminating the Widowmaker that our heroes invested so much effort into protecting. The blue team was on route to take the first point in a sweep, but despite consistently finding eliminations, the defender's spirit could not be broken. No matter how many of them were taken out, the point remained contested and soon their comeback began. Doom might not have the head-clicking prowess of their Widowmaker counterpart, but even a Diamond Widow is good enough to play the janitor and clean up the kills that their team prepared for them. Just like before, the red team pulled out the Uno reverse card every time their opponents thought themselves in the lead. Instead of relying on explosive solo carry performances, it was their strong game play fundamentals that came out ahead. Faker was clearly an experienced player, they knew their angles and how to play them, but a sniper is not as much of a one-man army as the forums would lead you to believe. Their eliminations meant nothing in the face of the defenders' team play who rallied not only to keep each other alive, but also to do their darndest in order to push the attackers back to whence they came. It is worth mentioning, however, that Doom was not a participant of that aforementioned team play more than its sole beneficiary. Trying to convince a hitscan player to stop ego-peaking somebody who's clearly better than them is like trying to get Blizzard to fix Zenyatta's hitbox. It is surely a nice idea in theory, but you and I both know it's never gonna happen. While Doom succeeded in not getting Widow diffed again, actually getting an elimination for a change, it did end up having adverse effects. Bunny was beckoning them to stop overextending like that, but Doom was not satisfied until they validated their hitscan prides. And that led to a whole bunch of problems. The blue team used the hero's desire for team play against them. Since they rallied around their overextending Widowmaker, they put themselves 
themselves in a bad position as well. Usually I like to say that feeding together is better than feeding alone, but in this case it created an opening for their enemies to waltz onto the objective. Even amidst a fierce battle for the point, the two hitscan mains cared for nothing more but to find out who of them is better. And while this is a fight that Doom started and Faker won, Bunny was there to end it once and for all. And I mean that in a very literal sense. You know, the funny thing about these stories is that you can tell different tales even within the same match. This whole feud between Faker and Doom was really just a side story in the grand scheme of things. They were fighting for their own hitscan pride while the rest of the team was competing for skill rating. I could have told the tale of how Doom was just a decoy for the red team to distract Faker while their tank line is fighting for the objective. I could have talked about how Osidon's gameplay got more and more aggressive as Unname continuously challenged them in their position as main tank. I could have spun this tale any which way I wanted and whatever the two Widowmakers did would have been just a drop in the ocean. It wasn't Faker's aim that allowed their team to capture the first point and it wasn't Doom's horrendous positioning that stopped them from capturing the second. As a matter of fact, the outcome of this game would have probably ended up the same with or without the two Widowmakers. And as such, Bunny and friends had proven that what truly made a difference was team play. But this is it for our story here today. If you enjoyed this video then by all means do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, subscribe if you want to see more and hey if you find yourself bored why not check out the last episode with that cheating Widowmaker. Trust me when I say that, seeing them get styled down by a bunch of plats was truly satisfying. You can find the card on screen right now. But until then thank you once again for watching and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Peace.